So I started this project during my PhD. So I'm finishing a PhD here at uh, Wurmlab in Marin. And what I uh, was looking into was to compare the genetic diversity between social and solitary insects. So our hypothesis was that since uh, in social species like ants, you usually only have the queen and a male um, reproducing and so contributing to the genetic pool, uh, we were expecting to see a lower genetic diversity in these species compared to their uh, solitary relatives. And to do this, uh, I had to get terabytes of genomic data online and then build bioinformatics pipeline to process that data. And at the same time, I was also involved in um, some web projects. So I was building web apps, and so I was trying to find a way that I could reuse some of the stuff I was building uh, that was running on a server, uh, be able to run the same code on a browser for a web app. Um, so after looking at the sources of data that were available, I found that I could use the NCBI database to get most of the data I needed. So I look at all the species that I could potentially use for this analysis, but to decide if I could include the species in my analysis or not, I had to fetch all the information that was available on that database regarding that species uh, in terms of samples, the projects, the papers, to know if the data that was available was compatible with the approach I was trying to, to use. And so this required doing thousands of queries to the database, and all these queries were kind of interconnected. So I wrote a tool called Bionode in CBI that allows to do this kind of queries uh, um, using um, Bionode. And with this tool, I realized that only I could only use a subset of the data that was uh, available. And so my main results are that looking at 24 insect species, we do see uh, a lower genetic diversity in the solitary one, in the social ones. But to get to this result, um, I was doing pipelines that look something like this. And so each circle is a task, and each arrow uh, is a dependency. So usually the output of one task is the input of another. And you have to wait for the task to finish before you can actually <coughs> do something. Uh, go to the, the next task. And so these pipelines, uh, when you're trying to do several things at the same time, can become really messy and you start generating a lot of intermediate files. Um, and um, I was trying to find a better way to, to solve this problem. The other issue is that um, the volume of data that um, DNA sequencing technologies are generating are going to surpass uh, the volume of data generated by any other field, or even companies like Twitter or YouTube. So we really need a better ecosystem of tools to manage this amount of data. So what Bionode is trying to do is create small tools uh, that you can that just try to do one thing well, and you can combine together to build your um, data analysis pipeline. And then, in some cases, you can you use that code, that pipeline, and run it in your browser if you need to. So you're not restricted to running whatever analysis you're trying to do on a server. You can start distributing on several machines uh, that can run a browser. And this is possible due to a technology called Node.js, uh, which is written in JavaScript. And so Node.js allows you to process data in chunks. So what that means is, for example, if you're downloading sequencing data, um, with Node.js, as you're downloading the data, you can start filtering it if you want. So you don't have to wait for the download to be complete. You can start filtering right away. And then you could write the result to a file while you're still filtering it. So you end up storing only what you need, and this process is much faster. And you can apply this concept to your whole pipeline. And in the end, your code, your high-level code, ends up looking something like this, which is a lot more manageable um, 
than what we currently have. So streams are not new. If you use the command line, you're probably using streams all the time when you're doing a pipe. But the issue when you're trying to implement um, a streaming analysis is that if you have somewhere in your pipeline a bottleneck, you have a chunk of data that's blocking one of the steps. When you try to get process more data, it's going to get lost or it's going to crash um, or you're going to get random errors. And that's where Node.js is different because um, it's based on a concept called pool streams. So what happens if you're trying to push the data and the stream is blocked, the data gets cached. So it goes to a buffer. And <laughs> this um, will slow down <coughs> all the analysis upstream of the bottleneck so while what's happening downstream continues. So things will start slowing down. And if you eventually fill the buffer, they, are, they can actually stop and pause to wait for everything to be done downstream. And once it's done, the downstream steps will ask for more data automatically. So you don't have to worry about any of this. You will always try to go as fast as possible on your uh, machines. So we recently had a Google Summer of Code student working for us for three months. And he tried to push this even further and create a syntax that would allow you to build very complicated pipelines in a simple way. And at the same time, try to be able to use the existing tools that are already available out there uh, and that are not streamable, be able to combine these tools with Pino tools that are streamable. And so this project is called Watermill. And I'm going to give you an example of what this might look like. Uh, disclaimer, this is still a work in progress. But uh, I'm going to show uh, a cartoon of the pipeline. And the code is going to show up uh, in, at the bottom. So let's say you're trying to get a DNA reference. And you then want to index that reference to access it faster. So that will be one pipeline. So you can bind these two tasks with a join. At the same time, you can have another pipeline running in parallel that's downloading samples and filtering those samples. But at some point, let's say you want to align your um, samples data to the reference, you look for variant. So you need to do a junction. You need to get data from both pipelines that are running in <coughs> parallel. At some point, they need to combine for the align step. But then you're going to do two experiments. You're going to want to test A and test B. And they're going to, at this point, your pipeline is going to fork. So test A and test B, they're going to be reading the aligned data. We're not copying the aligned data. We're reading it from the same source. And as soon as one of the tests is done, you can pipe it to a visualization, to a plot. And you don't have to wait for the other test to finish. Um, and then you bind all these things with another join. And then you have an outer join. So, what your code ends up looking is something like this at a high level, which might seem a bit complicated, but it's actually a nice way to reason about these complicated pipelines. And it allows you to easily switch pieces or make it um, more complex. And at some point, we hope to have a graphical user interface that will allow you to just drag and drop and generate this code so you don't actually have to type it. And you can just reuse uh, tasks that are already uh, program. So Binode is still a small community, um, but we collaborate with uh, uh, several other projects that are building visualizations for biological data or data versioning, data distribution. And all these projects, they're based also around Node.js, JavaScript. So there's a lot of potential for collaboration and integration. And I recently won a 10-month scholarship uh, the, by the Mozilla Science Lab. So I'm going to use this fellowship to try to attract more contributors to the project and maybe more funding and to make it more useful and try to collaborate more with all the other projects around so we can build a nice uh, ecosystem around this technology. And if you're interested in any of this, uh, please come talk to me later. Thank you.
start filling the gap where in terms of scale on the data? So there's a lot of projects trying to provide interface and try to provide solutions so you can build um, pipelines in an easier way and more scalable way. But what Bionode the <coughs> is providing is uh, the ability to scale because of the streams. Because you're processing data um, as streams and not you're not doing each step separately. So that's one of the innovation. <coughs> and the other thing is because it's in JavaScript, you can run that code anywhere you want. So if you're building a web app, you can <coughs> take that code and run it there, which means uh, if the user needs to access, uh, to do some operation, some simple operation in the browser, you don't need to access the server and do a request and overload your <coughs> facility <coughs> machines. They can just do it from their own browser. So for s you could, and for also for education purpose, you could have them do some bioinformatics on the browser without ever touching a server. Could you drop our code? So you, we, we use our code and Python codes with Node. So if you're doing server type side things, you can do that. And that's actually what we try to achieve with Watermill, so that you could use existing scripts, existing command line tools, um, and just use Node as the tool to orchestrate everything. So you don't have the benefit of streams, but you have the benefit of the speed of, uh, and the easiness of parallelization and building the pipeline. Um, but then you cannot do R on the browser. But uh, for most cases, that's fine. Okay, thank you.